What's up, everyone? Russ Swigger coming back to you guys on YouTube for a software review of one of AT&T's most popular phones on the market currently, the Motorola Itrix 4G. So this software review is going to include everything. I mean, everything is going to be very detailed. So if you don't know how to, if you do not know how to use a smartphone like a Motorola Atrix 4G, and if you don't know anything about technology, then you're going to learn right now. All right, everyone. So first off, we're going to start with the physical keys on this thing. We're going to go to the right side of the phone, and we're going to find a volume rocker up and down here. Nothing else on the right side here. On the left side, we have a micro USB charging port, and that is, of course, for charging. I shouldn't have said that. And uh, on the bottom, we have an HDMI port. And we have an HDMI cord that goes with it. This is not the HDMI cord. This is the HDMI cord. And the other end plugs in here, facing upward like so. I did it, that's the wrong way. That's, it is the right way. Oh, come on. Yeah, guys, this thing doesn't like me. Plugs in like that. And the other end goes into your HD TV here. Okay, and then on the front, we have a front facing camera right here. And then we have our earpiece here, Motorola logo. And we have four capacitive buttons. Options button, home button, back button, and search button here. And this is a 4-inch QHD display, 960 by 540 resolution. Beautiful. On the back, I'm going, there's no back on it right now because I'm going to show you how to put the battery in and how to take the back off because back isn't too hard. On the back, of course, this is your battery compartment. I'm using a micro SIM card and a SanDisk drive here. Micro SD card. And then we have a 5 megapixel camera of dual LED flash geotagging and face stabilization, which comes in, or stabilization, which is if you shake your camera a lot, it's very stable, it doesn't blur, which is pretty good. Okay, everyone, so we're going to start with powering on a device. So first we have to put the battery in, right? This is our battery. This is a 1930 milliamp hour battery, a huge capacity battery, rated at 9 hours of talk time on 3G. I do not know about 4G yet, so don't ask. So we're going to stick this into the phone as so. Make sure the pins are pointing to your right side, and you should put it in here. Snap sound into place like so. No problem. The back isn't too difficult. I'd leave the instructions on there if you guys know what you're doing with it. So we're going to slip the back on like this here, and it pops into place like so. And you have to snap the sides in too. And to take the back off, you just grip it by the sides like this, and then you pull back on a cover like that, and you see it pops right off like so. Okay, now to turn the device on, we'll go with that. This is also a biometric biometric finger scanner. So if you slide your finger on it like this here, you can get into your phone access like that. But you hold this button in for at least two seconds. And once you see a little green light at the top like that, and you'll start. Your cool logo, dual core technology, Motorola's logo. So we will power on our device. And as it powers on, I don't know, get some cookies or get some food or enjoy the show while you have while you have it. So, we also forgot to cover the charger. I forgot about that. The charger plugs into a power supply as this here. It's standard for most of these smartphones today. Plugs in here. And then it goes to the charging port right here, like this. Plug into your wall and you're done there. So, as we wait for this thing to power on, we have a pretty neat little logo here. Rethink possible. Well, I rethought possible and that's why I got this phone. So, logo comes in handy. Okay, guys, we are powered up. And we're going to use, we're going to demonstrate the biometric finger scanner. So, which is located right where the power button is. You slide your finger like this here. And then, there you go. You're unlocked. And, okay, so we're going to go through some of the basic software features of this phone currently. So, first, we're going to start with our app drawer, which you're going to need that to access every app you have. So, you're going to tap this little circle button on the bottom like so. And as you can see, this is a very snappy device. It's still loading. Snappy. When it's unloading, I'll clear out some notifications. See, this is very snappy device, as you can see here. Okay, so number one thing you want to look into is some of the basic features. We have such things such as one tap cleaner. It, actually, I recommend this because it cleans out the cache files, the cache files on your programs. And cache, what that is, it's data basically stored on your phone for later use. But you don't need that's temporary data. You don't need it. So if you tap on that. So you can clear your data easily, and you can download you can download this from the Android Market Cache Cleaner, and it should be able to find everything imme immediately. Click OK, tap OK, clears out your cache, and your phone will be a lot faster. I tell you that because it does make a huge difference in your speed. Next up, we're going to have would be let's see what we got here. Battery booster that just kind of displays the percentage, 
And actually, this isn't the app for it. The app for it would be here somewhere. I just have to find it. Uh, maybe. Okay, we're going to go to, let's say our settings area next. Settings are a big thing. We have your wireless networks. This is where you're going to go if you want to connect to a Wi-Fi network. So, you have your airplane mode, Wi-Fi. You want to turn it on, you just click it here, and it will turn on for you. And to get onto a network, you go into Wi-Fi settings, which is already connecting to me here. And this Wi-Fi network does not work correctly, so, which is mine. And you can turn off anything on here. Of course, you can force close if it uh, gone if something probably happened here. Okay, so you have the option to turn off your Wi-Fi by clicking that here. Network notification. It says notify me when an open network is available, so your phone will tell you whenever it discovers a new Wi-Fi network around you, which is pretty helpful. We can add Wi-Fi networks, add and manage. Auto connect is turned on because if you don't want to have to go through, I'll have to go through the settings to turn my Wi-Fi networks on. Have it automatically connect for you. Okay, so then we have mobile hotspot feature. This is a biggie here. A mobile hotspot feature. You just tap that, and yes, okay. So it validates. Make sure you have the right plan on your internet or on your AT&T account before doing this because it will not work. Simply just will not work. And if you do, it will successfully turn on. You connect up to five devices on these. Um, I connect to my iPad, my iPhone, my I don't know what else I have. And it not slow down the phone initially because of the dual core NVIDIA Tegra 2 processors on board, which is a huge leap forward. This is actually the first device in the U.S. to have a dual core processor chip on it. I do not know if there's any other dual core phones out on the market currently, but I know this was the first here. Okay, so this is your Wi-Fi hotspot here. It does drain your battery, but since you have a high capacity battery to live with here, it doesn't really do a whole lot, I've found. Maybe you'll, your, different, your uh, experience will differ depending on how much you use your phone, what kind of programs you have on it. Simple as that. Next is mobile hotspot. You just went over that. VPN settings, nothing unless you want a virtual private network. Your mobile networks, this here can ta uh, target here uh, access point names. And I did notice these three different options and I tested them. There's nothing different going on with the phone. I don't know why they include these on here. So, I mean, I really have no idea exactly. So we go from there. And that's pretty much all for the settings area in that area. Call settings, that's basically if you want things such as uh, your phone number, your voicemail number. You have things such as sound. This is where you can get your ringtones at. So we have phone ringtones here. I have the AT&T tone. Chrome ring. It's kind of neat. So you see you have a lot of options here to pick from. Whichever you want. The volume, which is uh, can be accessed through the volume rockers right here. But you can choose your system volume here, your alarm volume, and for most of you people, that's enough for your jobs. I suggest turning this up very loud. That is very annoying. Your media volume can be adjusted. Your ringtone volume can be controlled by your volume rocker. Audible touch tones. It plays tones when using dial pad. Of course, everyone loves to have that. Audible selection plays sound when making screen selections. I don't like that because it gets very annoying. Screen lock sounds. Yes, that's pretty cool, but the thing is, it's very low volume, so you really don't hear it, so turn it on, turn it off, your choice. Next, we're going to jump into display. This is where you can adjust your display brightness. Uh, you have the, uh, the choice for auto-rotating screen. Your animations, all animations. If you want to save your power, turn on no animations, but I'm going to leave it on all. Screen timeout. This is an area where if you want to have your phone shut off the screen by itself, you can choose from 15 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, 2 minutes, 10, 30, up, basically. Or you can have never time out, which means you have to shut it off by yourself. Maybe. And then you have your uh, brightness. This is where you can choose automatic brightness, which is best to have enabled. It uses the ambient light sensor up here to determine how bright the screen should go. If you want to do this automatically, just tap that off, and you can adjust it here, as you can see the slider. I normally leave that on. If you want to save your battery, I'd turn it off and put, set it to a predefined level. Your notification LED light. This is to notify you of different notifications. It'll blink up in this corner up here. I don't know if I can get it to do it. But that's turn it on and off here. Basically. Maybe. Next up is data manager. This tells you basically it can control how much data you want to use. Uh, you can choose if you want to roam or not roaming outside the US. And uh, normally in other areas it's going to cost you some money. So I leave this off unless you're going outside of the US and going to maybe Mexico or. Um, out of the country somewhere. You can go to email and corporate sync, which connects to your uh, work email, which is pretty neat. Social applications, what kind of specifies like Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, for other things. I'll jump into that. Now, this is actually pretty interesting. 
This will only allow these to sync over Wi-Fi. This is a good thing 